The next cut I need to make is uh, cutting off the tongue at the right length and then preparing it uh, to host some sort of hinge joint. So this is what I have in mind um, from the, uh, the front of the trailers that way, but here in this diagram. So here's my 2x2. Two two. I'm going to drill or uh, sort of grind a hole that's good enough for the outer diameter pipe that I have. The inner diameter is 5 8 and that's going to be the bolt that acts as the hinge. Two uh, sort of angled um, one by one bars and the pipe is going to extend all the way across. Once I've got this welded up, then I cut the bar at all of these points and then attach it to the main sort of support beam there on the trailer body by these uh, L brackets. So, uh, and then I'm going to see if the thing feels like totally rock solid, then I'm not going to bother putting in additional uh, braces. But uh, if I feel like there's any flexibility at all and it's not going to increase the weight significantly, then I put angle brackets on both sides. So here's how the math works. Uh, looking at uh, my bike, I figured out where the center of mass is, roughly speaking, and it's about 44 inches from the very front of the front tire to the center of mass, and I've got, for the points where the bike's going to actually be standing on the trailer, 66 inches um, from axle to axle. So the key points here are, can I drive it onto the back of the trailer while the trailer is down, without the trailer trying to stand up before both tires are on it? And the other key is, when I've got the bike fully forward on the trailer, where's the center of mass going to be? It has to be in front of the axle. Uh, it doesn't have to be in front of the pivot point, because the pivot will do whatever gravity tells it to, which is uh, why the axle is so key. So here's my little diagram for that. Um, I've worked out, this is 96 inches overall, or 8 feet, uh, when this thing is tilted back, I'm estimating roughly about two inches there. So we've got about 50 inches from the back before this thing tries to tilt forward and 46 inches remaining on the front. So compare that to the key sort of uh, dimensions that we know. We are 44 inches from where the wheel stops to the center of mass. So that's good because I know I have, even with this in the upright position, about, roughly speaking, 46, maybe 44. Um, I, I can put this on last and I can even move it 12 inches forward along the tongue without affecting um, how stable the bike stands on it. So the issue is the bike from axle to axle is 66 inches long but the trailer from the point at which the front tire is touching until at uh, some point before the back tire is touching and the front tire will be past the axle is less than 66 inches. So the front tire, once it gets past this point at about 50 inches, roughly, that's when we are going to be pushing down on the front of the trailer and nothing resisting the trailer coming up. So we need something holding the trailer down, really, the back wheel. And the only way to do that is to extend this distance to 66 inches so that it covers the axle to axle uh, distance uh, length of the, of the bike. Um, so, I'm going to have to put like a piece of wood. I don't want to just extend the length of the trailer for a couple of reasons. It won't be strong. Um, and I want the trailer to take a 4x8 sheet of wood as its um, floor. So, the easiest way to handle this would be to just put a board, a 2x6 or something, to drive up on. And then as long as that board hits the back tire by the time the front tire gets past here, then that will stop the trailer tilting upwards while I'm trying to drive up onto it. So that's something I can easily accommodate and then most of the times I'm using the trailer for whatever else I'm using it for it won't be dealing with motorcycles because I really don't tow my motorcycle around that much. But the whole reason I'm having to make this beyond just that I want a trailer is this is my old creation uh, this is a class 3 hitch effectively and I just put this on the back of the truck and then I put a 2x6 on the toe pointing out here and then just drive the front tire right up onto the thing and then uh, uh, secure the bike by its handles to the left and right corners of the bumper and uh, that works brilliantly but I don't have a vehicle with a class 3 hitch anymore so I need to do something else. This also takes all of the weight of the bike as tongue weight and uh, the vehicles I have are capable of sort of class one hitch. 
so I can't really put a lot of weight on the front of the um, or on the back of the car anymore. So the trailer obviously is a necessity for that, and uh, this uh, beautiful thing is going to have to go up for sale. I quite enjoyed using it too, but uh, anyway, so back to the trailer. Let's get cutting. You can probably see what I've got going here. This is uh, three and a half feet of my pipe. I've got it squared into the uh, tongue. The tongue's not perfectly straight, you'll notice. It's got kink in it, but uh, I think after the fact, I'll worry about heating it up and see if I can try and get that kink out. But ultimately, it's not gonna be a huge, big deal. So here's the way I'm doing it. I grind it out, a little hollowed out spot, and then I cut that little triangular section. So then the flap of metal that you see at the top and the matching one at the bottom, I'm going to heat that up and hammer it down and then weld it directly to the pipe. So I mean all this will get done with this thing being square and then at the end obviously I'll continually check it but um, I can't bend this pipe. This has to remain completely um, like under zero stress uh, or any kind of uh, tension. So the um, plane of uh, articulation or rotation if you like uh, remains uh, perfectly straight. Uh, ultimately, again, metal wears out and then over time that'll become less and less an issue even if it's um, wearing out slightly. The range of motion on this thing is not very much, uh, but still always aim for perfect and then if it's a little bit off then you've got your your margin of error to play with, but you got to try and make it as perfect uh, as you can, as square as you can off the bat. So let's uh, tack this up and then um, see if I can't get this thing all uh, welded together nice and straight. Well, there we go. This is now hammered. It is roughly square, and uh, I don't believe there is a significant twist from front to back. Um, measured off a floor, assuming my floor is right, I've got about 18, or is it eight? It'd be eight centimeters and eight and a half centimeters off the floor. So assuming my floor is right, um, and there's actually gonna be a heave right here, so maybe it's even more square than I think. But this is about as close as I'm gonna worry myself about getting. So I'm gonna close these welds across here, and then when I cut the pipe, I'll weld these joints. I'll get rid of that tack, like grind that off, but then weld it around so that it's uh, flush and smooth. And then the contact point will be the pipe interior itself. A project update for you. I'm, I'm sort of going to stop myself from committing a project overkill on this thing. I don't think I really need these diagonal sidebar things because I'm not going to tow anything. Uh, well, I'll just say I'm not going to tow this trailer without this uh, joint done like up here at the front of the trailer. There's, it's going to be the crossbars here and it's going to be pinned here. So I really don't need to worry about this thing being pulled to the left or right. I'm not going to smash loads into it. Um, so that being said, I absolutely don't need these great big side bars to make sure that there's going to be a straight joint all the way across. All I need is the two inches of pipe inside of this and then two inches of pipe inside of each of two more of these. So I'm going to cut myself uh, two more of these little two inch pipe things. I have to grind out the whole top of this to get the pipe in, the 5 8 inch interior diameter pipe, and then weld it into place the same way I did that. And then with these two squares, uh, I'll have everything sort of welded up. I'll put the bolt through them and then weld them to the frame. So they will be straight, it won't grind, and I'll have um, consistent interior contact between the um, inside of the pipe and the outside of the six inch bolt that you can see there. So I just saved myself quite a bit of welding. Then I just got to make sure I do a nice sort of joint up at the front, a pin joint, and I'm not going to drill through that cross beam and I'm not going to drill through the tongue either. So in, in both cases I'm going to weld something onto each that will be uh, drilled with another one of these little chunks of pipe and then I'll put a pin through it like one of these, where'd it go? One of these guys. So that'll be what holds it 
at the front. I don't think I have a clevis pin for this one because I wrecked it. But uh, whatever, you get the picture. 